the Riddler went in. And this is the beginning of the movie, y'all, just to let you know. Take these little kids out of here. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You want to have nightmares? Who wants popcorn? Let's go get popcorn. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Shit, every time you pull duct tape out, you're like, ah, ah, daddy gonna help kill me. This is the Batman. And this is the big movie this weekend, of course, made uh, uh, in one weekend like 120 something million dollars. Mm-hmm. Uh, pretty favorable to great reviews, unless you're Patrick Gerst, and that's another story. <laughs> if you're him, it's trash. <laughs> <laughs> a lot of people say this is, uh, a lot of people have been saying, like, hey, look, if you love The Dark Knight and that's your favorite movie, this is probably your. Second favorite Batman movie could be your most favorite Batman movie. R is right up there with that great film. That's a warning. <laughs> Shit, if I saw somebody walk out in the shadow looking like that, I'd be scared too. <laughs> <laughs> I thought that that's what was great about this is that Batman was intimidating because he's so angry. Like, if you didn't know who he was, because he's, I mean, he. I give it to him. He's got presentation. Sure, he yeah. found the darkest spots to walk yeah. out of. <laughs> <laughs> and I love that about this, man. I love that about this. But what we're going to do is we're going to, of course, talk about things that we couldn't talk about in the review. Some of those things that, th- that we thought they did well in this movie that makes it stand out as whether we think it's the best Batman movie or not. Well, you know, that's all, that's all opinion, but... It definitely did some things that made it its own Batman movie. Mm-hmm, yes. We're going to talk about that. We're going to talk about some things that were teased before that were actually brought to fruition here that ended up being true. And talk about some things maybe that we thought could use improvement that we couldn't directly say in the review at the time because we didn't want to spoil anything. I know these guys, are, I know you're very eager to talk about this. Sure, sure. Yeah, yeah. I already talked I about it. I want to go into detail. Okay. Yeah. I'll tell you this. Okay, so... Let's just go ahead and start talking about some of the things that this movie, and this is going to be a very open roundtable discussion Sounds here. Sounds good. But let me, I'm just going to kick it off by saying one of the things that I really enjoyed about this, and it's not the first time they've done it, but you know, Batman is going to Arkham Asylum a lot and, and talking to people and, you know, and, and putting people in Arkham Asylum. I love that it turns out that his family had, his family, they're very corrupt. tarnished. They're corrupt. They had they were corrupt. They had not only connections to Arkham Asylum, they had connections to the gangsters around town. Mm-hmm. You know, who who knows what other dirt they had on them. But I like that the Wayne family legacy and the Wayne family, Thomas and Martha Wayne, they're tarnished people. Thomas was in, in bed with the Falcons. Uh Martha she's mentally ill. Mm-hmm. She was in Arkham. She was in Arkham, yeah. Mm-hmm. And you know, that's the thing that uh I have been watching this long Halloween. On uh, on uh, on HBO Max, right. and if you haven't seen it, watch it, and you'll notice there's a lot of connections here, with especially with them being the, the Wayne family being so tied in with gangsters and whatnot. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You'll find there's a lot of connections with this movie and the Long Halloween. There's lots of crazy out there. They've even deleted some scenes from the Batman that are like some scenes that oh, are really? in the Long Halloween. Yeah, we'll get to that, but there's some Silence of the Lambs scenes in there, which I was saying, we were actually talking about, yeah. it'd be cool if they actually did that uh, for one of these movies. They had a Silence of the Lambs scene where Batman goes in and questions people. Sure. They did that for this movie, but they cut it out. And it, and it's a way to d- handle a particular character that we've seen a lot of, but in, in different circumstances. And we can get into more details later on. But you're right, this, is, this, this movie is heavily inspired by The Long Halloween, and also Batman Year One. As well, which yeah. deals with that criminal um, mob element in there, and just Batman relationship with Jim Gordon, in general, because they're partners in this movie. Yeah, yeah, you know. Uh, but aesthetically, you're right. No, but please, anybody pick it up from where I just left off here. I was talking about the Wayne family, you know, oh, corruption well, and all well, that. It, it, well, it, oh, I'm sorry. Go ahead. Well, just uh, just quickly, I was going to say, it just does seem like you can't operate in Gotham unless you, uh, you know, you work with the mob. Grease yeah. a few palms, mm-hmm. if you will. Yeah. Uh, I like it because one, it's it's changing up the mythology of Batman to a degree. Because you know, typically in in the comics and other adaptations, the Waynes have always been presented like, oh, they were the the shining beacons of the city, and it's like, no, they they were also involved in a criminal element. And it's very similar to Telltale's uh, that the Batman games, yeah, where yeah, the yeah. Waynes are they were, I mean, they even went even further with the where they were committing murders and stuff, and they were right in league with Carmine Falcone and 
how Thomas Wayne was operating Arkham Asylum, was killing a bunch of patients just to cover up the family secrets. And, and then Bruce had to deal with the revelation, go like, oh my God, I've ha- held my father up to this ideal. And he was just as bad as these criminals I'm going after. And it was really different. And I, I liked it. And I liked the movie leaned into that too. Yeah. Yeah. You know, this is the, this, this, this goes to show you that sometimes you really have to just kind of recreate these characters or reinvent these characters. Oh, very much so. You know, because yeah. some people would say, well, if you change it, you're changing the character. Well, if you've seen that character long enough or you've seen that history because, look, they didn't even show us the origin story. Thank here. God they didn't We did not that. need that, man. No. You know, they didn't even show us that. So this whole background of Thomas and Martha Wayne having been, you know, pretty much the people who, they, they were these, uh, 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 oh, what if a philanthropist to to, to Gotham, sure. You know they hearts of gold. They they the they're the family that was keeping the city from falling apart. They're the best of us. Yeah, they're the best. No, it's like I like that they went back and started reinventing this past to show that you know Batman, you, and which I think drives him crazy even more. Oh yeah, like knowing that his parents were messed up. Well, think about this. He's doing this because the legacy of his parents and they, they were taken from him. These these beautiful pure people. Mm-hmm. Okay. They weren't. Matter of fact, the father was involved in with the very criminals I've been devoting myself to stopping. And if his mother was in Arkham, it speaks to the insanity that has probably been passed on to him. Yes. That is true. Wow, that's a great point. Yeah. This whole movie is he's about I'm vengeance. He constantly says people yeah. refer to him as vengeance. And that's like seems to be the theme of the movie. And he realized at a certain point, I can't be just that because it's causing this escalation. Mm-hmm. They even say crime is not going down, it's increasing right. because it, the city has become so volatile. And that's why I love the message at the end of the movie. He has that realization where I can't just be the Batman because that is just not working. A lot of people are criticizing this movie because, uh, you know, I mean, not a lot, but the, some of the criticisms that I've heard is like, Common complaints, this yeah. Batman is, you know, he's not Batman. He's messy. He's, you know, he's, he's, he's scaring people. He's going about this the wrong, the wrong way, and it's like, well, that's <laughs> the wrong way. Yeah, and it's yeah. like, well, first of all, it's a dude in a bat suit running yeah. around. Of course, he's going about this the wrong way. He's crazy. But the thing is, is that I think this is done intentionally. Where same, Bru- you know, thing. Bruce Wayne, the character, is just angry. Yes. He's just yes. he's just mad, and he's and he's messy because he's caught up in his emotions. Yeah. He doesn't realize that to take this job and do this, being the savior of the city and being a, a smart detective, because mm-hmm. some people said that he's a terrible detective. Well, the whole thing is that, yeah, he's messy, man, because he's still he's so wrapped up in his emotions. And I think this movie is where we get this whole thing of him realizing, like, Jesus, nuts. You know, yeah, I need to yeah, back off. Yeah. <laughs> and he says, you know what? I can't be vengeance. You know, I have to be hope mm-hmm. to people. I think some of the flaws that people are seeing with this and hey, I ain't Batman. Batman wouldn't do this. Batman wouldn't do that. Uh, you don't know you what don't Batman know is. <laughs> Batman's not real. You hang out with Batman? <laughs> yeah. no, he's, you don't want to. <laughs> no, he's, he's, he's real to me, damn it. But, you know, <laughs> but like you said, this is year one. This is and plus this is an angry uh, young Batman that that, that 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 we've never seen on screen before. Sure. There's a reason why he realizes like my anger is getting in the way of everything I'm trying to do. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I can't even get clues right. I'm up, I'm I'm interrogating people the wrong way. Uh-huh. Just busting in and, and, and jacking people up. It's like th- yes, this is this is the movie where he realizes I got to get my shit together if I'm going to do this. It's yeah. funny cuz he was thinking about his anger, how he was just angry through the whole thing. And one of the scenes that that made me laugh unintentionally is that uh Alfred who might have died but mm. he's just coming out of a coma. He's just coming out of a coma, and Bruce is there. How come you tell me about my daddy? <laughs> I was like, God damn, man! I, I'm sorry. I, I'm fine. How are you? <laughs> I like that he's about. Alfred's like, I'm about to quit this fucking job. You yeah. keep messing with me. Man. He wants to hit. Everyone wants to hit Bruce throughout this entire he wants movie. To spank his ass so bad. Mm-hmm. And I like that too because I think, I think in the next movie, what they need to do is that they need to make. I think. You need to make uh, Bruce Wayne realize I never appreciated you like I like yeah. I should yeah. Yeah. because in this I mean he's he's thirty five years old thirty some years old and I know I, that's Robert Pattinson's thirty Pattinson is thirty five I don't know how old oh, Batman Bruce, is or mm. Bruce Wayne is I got the impression he's in his like late twenties yeah I got I got a, I got a twenties thing going on with, yeah, the, with the hair and the music yeah yeah, yeah. I I agree with y'all but. This whole thing with him, he's still acting like a spoiled fifteen-year-old. He is, and because they, they got that one scene, I love it where he's just mouthing off, 
to, to Alfred. And Alfred's like, look, I'm getting sick of this shit, you know. And, and I ain't Michael Caine. I ain't yeah. just make jokes. No, I ain't, no, <laughs> hell no. If this continues, it won't be long before you've nothing. Left. I don't care about that. You don't care about your family's legacy. What I'm doing is my family's legacy. You know, that scene was followed up <laughs> with with what every bratty teenager would say. You ain't my daddy. Yeah. You know, and it's like, okay, man. You know, this is, he ain't your daddy, but he's the closest thing that you got. And this is what I love about this. He just doesn't realize. I said, man, that's the closest thing that you have to a daddy and a friend. And I think that you need to, you know, we've seen this, you know, this idyllic, pure Batman before. Getting crazy with every movie. Mm -hmm. sure. But we've never seen one where he did not appreciate anybody because he's so obsessed with his with his job and Alfred, who being being the closest one to him, I like that he they made a scene. Where he tried to push push Alfred away. Yeah, but he but even he realizes later on in the movie that Alfred is all he really has in terms of family. Like that scene when Alfred survives the bombings in the hospital. Yeah, and yeah. the nurse is like, "Does he have anyone?" It's just and he just says, "It's just me." The movie opens up with a politician being killed, mm. and we'll get into the deaths in this in a little bit, man. Mm. There's a politician being killed, and you know, he has a family. Of course, he's leaving a, a son behind. Son still has his mother, so I'm not a complete orphan like, like Bruce Wayne. But I said this in the review. You didn't need an origin story this time around. We got it, and those glances to that kid, they say everything that you need, man. That's all you need. I'm gonna go pay my respects. Will you wait for me? Let me continue this. Fuck you looking at <laughs> <laughs> guys weird mom I was looking Fucking at me weirdo I've been there <laughs> you're trying to get the Batman that you've seen all this time and this is not the point here the point is we're looking at a very and this is what's great about it everybody's talking about how you're looking at a detective film yeah and you know and you are you know but this is the first time that we've really we've talked about Batman being crazy other people have said you're crazy but this is the Batman movie where he really is disturbed yes mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and I think that's the only reason why you can forgive this for not having a lot of characterization on Bruce Wayne's part I think you'll get that later but you know this is probably this is probably the darkest moment for him and uh, this is one where you know you you fear for this man because at some point we actually are scared. You know what? This guy's going to end up hurting somebody. He's going to snap. He's going to snap and hurt somebody. Which is why I would recommend he get better help, man. He, <laughs> you know, if, he won't get therapy because he's a proud man. But if he got help, he'd be he'd be all right. Hey, listen, we're, we're joking. And I, no, I really was making a point. I wasn't trying to do a really big segue. I just thought, you know what? This is good. You know, but <laughs> I mean, the opportunity opened itself. <laughs> I saw yeah. I saw, a, I saw an opening and I took I it. it. Take it away, I was, Batman. That's go what I got to go. I got I to gotta do it anyway. Y'all so. <laughs> said I didn't have a segue earlier, so I was, going, I was just going to stop and be like, let me tell you all this. Because it's serious anyway. And let, yes, people, we're making jokes. We're making jokes here. Uh, but we're not taking therapy lightly. We're not taking self-help lightly. We're not taking your mental health lightly right here. Uh, listen, and I'm being, I'm being serious right here. I haven't done it yet, but I, I, I took therapy before. And Martin said, yeah, you needed that shit. <laughs> so I have gone through therapy before. It did help. And honestly, I've thought about getting it again. And not because, you know, I didn't wait a long time because I was ashamed or anything like that. I don't know why. Maybe it didn't seem as convenient, but this actually makes it very accessible uh, to get it. Better help, people. Be, uh, let me say it again so you can hear it clearly, because some people think you're saying butter help. <laughs> uh, better. Like they put two D's in there. <laughs> no, people, it is better help. B E T T E R H E L P. What's so great about this is that this is online therapy that offers video and phone therapy and also live chat sessions with your therapist so that you don't have to be on camera if you don't want to. Some people are shy about that. Some people who are especially going to therapy for the first time. Mm -hmm. It can be daunting, but this makes it very easy. And, you know, you can stay that way or you can ease your way into it, uh, being face to face with someone. They match you up with a therapist based on the information that you give them. And listen, we talk about therapy. We're not talking about, you know, we're not talking about people who are in this what this these, this is for people who are in this condition but we're not talking about dire things like suicide i'm gonna hurt myself i'm gonna hurt somebody else i mean we're talking about keeping yourself 
healthy. Which a lot of people have needed in the last, yeah. you know, especially the last two years. Yeah. We're not talking about, you know, like a lot of people like to use this word. And I'm, I'm just saying this and I'm not using it. I'm just giving an example. Like this, they say, that's for crazy people. That's for people who are out there. No. Think of it like this. You go to a gym. Are you exercise to keep your body in shape or to just at least to keep healthy? You eat right to keep healthy. All those are physical things. You need to do that with your mind, too. So if you're feeling stressed, if you are having relationship problems, you just need someone to talk to. Hey, you know, I'm just I, I just feel like venting. Mm-hmm. That's what this is for right here. So people try it, man. Try it. You know, again, with uh, with with this, what I like about it is that uh, you can change your therapist anytime you like, too. They're there to help you with that. You know, usually when you're on your own trying to find another therapist, if you don't like somebody, you know, yes, it is hard. It is hard. But people are there to help you uh, and guide you through the selection process if you need it. People, here's something else. If you don't, if nothing else, hey, money talks sometimes. So you got nothing to lose by really trying this. Uh, And I'm going to give you more incentive go to betterhelp.com forward slash double toasted and when you put that link in there you can get 10 percent off your first month at betterhelp.com again that is b-e-t-t-e-r-h-e-l-p.com forward slash double toasted double toasted is d-o-u-b-l-e-t-o-a-s-t-e-d and get 10 percent off your first month over there very easy to try. It's not like a subscription, not like you're obligated to stay on it. So if it's not working, it's not working. But try it out. Like I said, just to talk to somebody. If you're just feeling stressed out, try it. And if you don't like it, you can quit. But get help somewhere. Or talk to somebody. Or seek therapy somewhere if you need it. There's all kind of options out there. But a good place to try is BetterHelp.com. And I want to thank BetterHelp.com for sponsoring this portion of the show. And, of course, I want to thank all of you out there for your support. All right. So, let's see where we can continue with this. Uh, let's talk about the tone of the movie, man. Uh, this We were talking about how this is not for kids. No, it's not. At all. You ain't. I said this in review. You ain't selling toys with this. You ain't selling Happy Meals. You ain't selling lunch boxes and bed sheets. It's not that. Even Dark Knight, I can see them doing that with. Sure. Mm-hmm. But this is not the one. No. Uh, the movie begins. Even when the movie begins, it was a brittle. I mean, brittle. It was. It was a brutal murder. I'm trying to sit up here and find so out. Sounds like a horror movie. It begins like a horror movie. Somebody, you know, the Apollo. Let me see here, Riddler. Because the way it opens up. Is pretty, I won't say gruesome, but it's disturbing, man. A man gets knocked out, bludgeoned. Bludgeoned to death. And if they ain't, I don't even think he was bludgeoned to death. All right, yeah, he suffocated. That's he, right. Yeah, right. The, the Riddler went in, and this is the beginning of the movie, y'all, just to let you know. Take these little kids out of here. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You want to have nightmares? Who wants popcorn? Let's go get popcorn. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Shit, every time you pull duct tape out, you're like, ah, ah, Daddy gonna help kill me? No, nah, man. You know it opens up. It with does a dude. make duct tape scary. Yes. it does. The noise, the sound, and Ooh, everything. Oh, that makes. sound! Yeah. Can he even use that in the trailer? Yeah. Uh, a guy gets bludgeoned. I don't even think he's killed. And the Riddler pulls out duct tape and wraps it around his face and suffocates him. Man, come on, man. Yeah, you know, that yeah. wasn't even necessary. And he also what cuts his thumb off too when he's uh, alive as well. Yeah. And you see that thumb? When thumb we were saying good. Matt Reeves was pushing the R rating here, he really was, man. Wow, you get yeah. a fuck early on in the movie. Yeah. yeah. Uh, there's a severed thumb in there. There, and when I was talking about that, this is like Saw. Uh, yeah. There's a scene where they had. We talked about. I just briefly mentioned. There's a guy who's probably gonna be eaten by rats. They showed briefly that guy's face was torn up by yeah. that, those yeah. rats. He had the commissioner. The commissioner. That's how uh, uh, Gordon, Gordon eventually moved up. becomes commissioner. Yeah, they yeah. shit. They chewed the fuck out that dude's face. Man. <laughs> that guy was like. Ooh! Oh, just wailing and crying the whole time. Oh, Jesus, man. I don't even think that's how they killed him, but they did eat his face up, man. And he had them nice fat jowls, too. Yeah, they were chewing on those for a while. The rats might have got full before they really did any real damage. (laughs) After picking their teeth, dude, just bleeding to death. Oh, man, I can't have another bite. (laughs) Eddie, we're done, by the way. (laughs) Yeah, rat trap, man. Uh, Man, I have to really admire 
how Warner Brothers, not just Matt Reeves, and Matt Reeves, you know, there's a lot of directors going, they're going, they're going to take as much as you give them. Yes. You'll, you'll push it, but really, Warner Brothers, man, I want to thank y'all for letting these directors go rated R, mm-hmm. R as close mm-hmm. to rated R, because they ain't really comfortable with doing that with Batman yet. Right. But they ease it into it. They, yeah. they are. I would not be surprised if they do for the sequel. I mean, and they got really close with this one, so I was like, why not? You know, I can tell you, not tends to be the way that goes. Yeah, yeah. It usually goes the opposite so? way. You think so? Yeah, mm-hmm. and they're not gonna go rated R. They already, they've already not listen. Even after you, Joker? Never, you never know. Yeah, you but know. also he wants to be a, a kinder, friendlier Batman uh, by the end. That's a good point. But the villains might be more crazy. But I, I just I think mean, really more than duct taping people and putting rat traps on their heads. There's always shit. Let's, let's not forget see. acid. <laughs> you know? Yeah, I know. But you know, the, even if they go R, it's not going to be a hard R. No, no. And that's another thing that I've had a complaint with the people. I don't want to go rated R. Mm-hmm. I, I don't think it's necessary. I, I admire this movie for not being rated R and being uh, PG thirteen because I think. First of all, because I, I talked to one person, they said all this needed was more gore, and they need to put out a rated R. <laughs> oh, no, 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 that wouldn't improve a thing. You know what this had? There's a lot of movies that are PG-13 because they want to be family friendly, they want to be kid friendly, they want to sell stuff. This was PG-13 one because Matt Reeves was held back, but I'm glad he was because it felt like this movie had class. Yeah, it mm. did. So. Talking about something that a lot of people were wondering if they were going to do this. And then it was rumored that they were going to do it. And then the movie, they actually did it. Uh, Talking about the Joker. The Joker tease at the end. Barry, what's this guy's name? Barry Keon. Barry Keon. Keon. Let me say this. A lot of people say they don't want to see the Joker again. And frankly, I don't either. There's too many other villains out there to do that with. But this boy right here, if they decide to do it, I think that's perfect casting. A lot of people don't like this act and they don't see it, but this boy has been crazy in every movie he's been see, in. See, I think it's good casting as much as he's always crazy and creepy in everything he does. Everything he's Even in. when he's not trying to be. But I think it's bad casting because also can never understand a fucking word he says. I, you know what? I understood him at the end of this. Like ba- he, I barely understood him. I, I understood because I thought it was a great line. You know, the end of the movie, you have the Riddler who's next in the next cell, and you hear him saying, "Don't be sad. You know, you you did your best." And what gave it away that was the the Joker is that he said, "You know, I know when you don't succeed, and everybody sees you as." A clown. And it was like, all right, you know, okay, now, pull, pull, now, now don't do this shit. I'm like, uh, I'm like, we really don't need that. But this boy has been, and I say, boy, even when he ain't him, he's a man now, but when he was a boy, he's been creepy and crazy and everything that he's been in since he's been weird since he was like 13 years old. I wanted to say one more thing. I'm really sorry about Bob. It's nothing serious. No, it is. You know, and the movie's weird itself too. That's the yeah. killing of a sacred deer, right. but he made it weirder. Yes, he did. <laughs> Shit, he's the one that stood out. <laughs> he, he made it very weird. <laughs> I mean, yeah, the direction is weird already, but but he takes it to the next level. He, he really does. Because <laughs> the whole time it's like, what do you got to do to get this kid out of your life? Yeah. Oh yeah. No, he was he was like in a movie that's already crazy. He made it crazy uh-huh. because of the character. Like all these other people who are weird already, they were like, get this crazy motherfucker away from us, man. Mm-hmm. Also, that brings together, again, the teaming up of uh, Colin, the teaming Farrell. Of Colin Farrell mm-hmm. and, and this actor right here. Uh, so a couple of things that was said. So it is the Joker at the end of this. But Did, did they say the words or did we just kind of know? No, he's, it's, it's the Joker. First of all, he said, treating you like a clown. Yeah. So there's that. He's and, laughing and everything. Yeah, he's laughing. He I mean, the hair. Cause clearly he has some type of prosthetic on his face. Like maybe it's a rictus grin or something. Right, right. Yeah. But I was just, I was thinking about it. I mean, yeah, you watch it, you're like, oh, that's the Joker. But I was like, you know, it's not so definitive that they couldn't walk it back. Okay, well, Matt Reeves said it was a Joker. Well, that yeah, you know. yeah. <laughs> So he said it was the Joker, and he said that, he said that he doesn't want... Now, here's the good news for people who don't want to see this character used again. He said that he just wanted to acknowledge that the character is there. Okay. In the universe. Okay. He doesn't really plan on using them that much. And he did use them in this movie more. That yeah. Silence of the Lamb scene that I'm talking about. So, it's Batman going to see the Joker. Who's not really full of the Joker yet. Mm-hmm. Maybe. But he said that, you know, 
in that scene, he goes to see the Joker to figure out how, you know, uh, to pick his brain because this Riddler dude is out there. Yeah, but and he needs to talk to a similar subject, like like yeah. I'm hunting Buffalo Bill, like Hannibal, like Hannibal Lecter. Yeah, sure, yeah, exactly. sure. And yeah. he said that the reason why he didn't use it just because he already had a scene something like that in there, and it just the story worked better without it. Mm. And the movie's three hours long. <laughs> yeah, no, you're right. We don't need. It. Yeah, that's why we could have cut more shit out if you ask me. Mm. But that's why. They kind of have this, and it didn't didn't need it, but it was supposed to be set up as like these guys are already familiar. Mm. And Batman is already shown as putting people in Arkham because when he goes to see this version of the Joker, the Joker tells him he's like, "Oh, is that our anniversary already?" So, yeah. you know, it's so the character's there. But Matt Reeves has said like, "I don't really want to use uh, the Joker again." He's already said that I'm looking for other characters to use. All he's right. he's this, got a hard on for, this, for this, Mr. Freeze. This better not be that shit where no no Benedict, Benedict Cumberbatch is not Khan. Trust me. Oh, oops, is he Khan? Yeah. Well, yeah. well my, my thing is like, listen, okay, because I I wouldn't be surprised too. It's like we need more Joker and everything because mm-hmm. he's so popular. I mean, the Joker, the movie made up over a billion dollars. Right. Yeah, a successful right. R-rated film of all time. If they're gonna have him in these sequels, which I think at one point they will. Do something very different with him. Keep him in Arkham the entire time. Make, keep, make him just that yeah. Hannibal Lecter character yeah. where Batman has to go and talk to you like, I'm trying to figure this out and you're, I, you're you're the only one who is crazier than maybe the person I'm chasing after and I need to just have you answer some questions. Get, maybe give me some answers. Have them like do a really different type of relationship between the two. That would be awesome to do that for the whole second movie. Yes, that's what I want. just going to him to consult. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And in the third movie, you find that the Joker is actually been running the shit from Perfect. The Perfect. The Perfect. Time. Yeah. And I'm like, God damn it, man. You, know, you <laughs> can do that. How Insta- did I not see that? Yeah. Instigating people. Yeah. I think pushing that, people's that butt. makes a lot of sense. And if you also wanted to do Dr. Harleen Quinzel and really show that manipulation of her over time, like, I mean, that's his doctor. If you want to make it a part, just another thing. Yeah. You know, you have options. But don't, don't do the another just joker no we don't need another joker and you know and it's and and, and like he said man for some reason he has a hard on for mr freeze and it's i don't think he's gonna he said i just would like to try to tackle a character and put it in his realistic world i'd love to see what he would do just after watching batman and robin (laughs) i don't see how you could put (laughs) any version of his character in this realistic world but i would love to see somebody pull it off yeah and he has he you well martin you say that but he has some very interesting uh choices are a choice for casting Cool party. <laughs> <laughs> he said, I'm about, hey, I might even try to call old Arnold up, see that's what he can right, do, that's man. That's right, an uh, 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 Olympic decathlete. Yes, yes. <laughs> we'll do it again. <laughs> mm. Be cool. <laughs> but, but yeah, yeah, I don't know. I would love to see how he would work it out. Yeah. You know, but he says he looks at that as a challenge. Now, I don't know oh, if he'll yeah, do that's it. That's a challenge. And yeah. the movie, yeah, I know it's really grounded, but there is some sci fi technology in this film. His eyes. Those contact lenses of his, of his, but those are not far fetched. They have, yeah, I, I, yeah. I know, I know. They got one foot in reality because now we're getting these glasses. Sure, and, yeah, sure. But I'm like, okay, so there is some kind of sci fi element. There's some stuff that he could do with this, I guess, with the Mister Freeze. I'm looking at technology that he already has in this movie. Mm. Um, it could be stuff where he ain't turning people into a block of ice, but it may, maybe something that makes people heart their heart stop or something. You know, I don't know. Freeze there. Yeah, freeze. He's, he's injecting them with shit. I don't know. Maybe the guy going. No, thank you for playing, Corey. Yeah. <laughs> boom, 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 boom. Yeah. Some dude going around with, with antifreeze to put it in it. <laughs> Mr. Antifreeze. Mr. Antifreeze. Mr. Antifreeze. Mr. Antifreeze. <laughs> Oh my God! <laughs> Let's just say that the villains that they have here, besides we already mentioned the Riddler, you know everybody else is cool. Colin Farrell, he's great. No, he's great, man. He's great. We already mentioned that. Want more of him? Uh, what I so this is I, I feel weird about this because Carmine Falcone was played so well yeah. by John Turturro, man. Uh, I thought John Turturro was great in his role, and I'm sorry that they killed him, man. Without the one guy in the city more reclusive than me. Thought you'd never leave the shoreline. Wow. <laughs> I love how gangstery these gangsters are, man. Mm-hmm. You know, old school, man. And uh, I really, that's one of the things I was disappointed in. Not that I thought it was a bad thing, but Carmine Falcone, man, I was sorry that they got that they shot him because, first of all, he's, I always thought that he was just a lighter version of uh, Batman's Lex Luthor in a way. He has no powers, you know, superpowers, that is. His powers come from just being in control of the city. For yes, yeah. yes, yes. Well, they, and they do so much with the gangsters that I am sad that it takes so long to finally get to Carmine, Carmine Falcone and we get to, just as we get to enjoy him, 
he's he's killed off. Uh, or did did we did they say he was dead? They didn't say he was dead. So they, who knows? He, he shot. So he, he shot him. He could come back. Uh, another thing was uh, Colin Farrell is so great as the Penguin and love every minute he's on. I feel like his character is not really all that germane to everything that's happening. Like, no. Like, if things had to be cut, you could cut him and the story would be the same. Unless this is whole this whole thing is set up for uh, Falcone to be knocked out and then the Penguin ascend in the next movie. Well, that's be, what they did. I yeah. mean, that's what they. That's what I was yeah. going to say. That so right. he'd be the next big villain. I was going to say, I did not like that they killed Carmine Falcone, but it's a great... Between killing uh, Carmine Falcone and the Floods... It sets up the penguin yeah. because there's a there's it's a power empty, vacuum. Yeah, it's a, it's an empty slot there now. Yeah, yeah. And that whole thing of killing Carmine Falcone was a way to like bring up the penguin. I think that's what that uh that penguin series is about. Mm-hmm. Now that he killed Carmine Falcone, he's taken over, mm-hmm. and that's and that show is going to be about his ascension to being like a major player mm-hmm. at this point. So, and that's yeah. one of three shows they're doing. They're doing the Gotham Central show, which I imagine with Jeffrey Wright and all the cops. Okay. Mm-hmm. And then they're doing an Arkham series, which was announced recently. Oh, so that'd probably be cool. Gonna get even more so that's probably where you're going to get Joker. Joker in there. So, yeah. yeah. Which I'd love to see. They're, they they're going all in with this universe. So I was like, okay. Yeah. Interesting. I, I got to say, with uh, I really love John Turturro in this role. Mm-hmm. He's so weird because he can either be like really scary, just give an incredible performance. Oh, he's like really goofy in a movie. He's, sure. He has a lot of range. But I just love this quiet menace to him. I really like uh, uh, Catwoman in this, man. Yeah. Let me see here. I like Universally, the- everybody's loving Catwoman. Yeah. So Kravitz did a great job. They did a lot of great stuff with uh, this character by well, making it true to this movie, a more grounded character, but also really catching the essence of the comic book character. Doo-doom, doo-doom. <laughs> 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 I've seen hats do this before where they gave her the cat ears yeah. but it's because the hat has like natural s- little nubs s- like that. Yeah. dude I, I will take this over the actual cat pointed <laughs> ears, ears yeah. any day because it wouldn't even have made sense for her to have that whole get up on they never call her Catwoman in the movie no, no. she's always Selena in the movie and I like that, you know. And and again, they capture like comic book moments, like when she's up, when she's doing some dirt. Batman's always there, like, "Hey, bitch, what you doing?" Wait a minute, wait, it's time to talk. Yeah. <laughs> Surprised him. <laughs> Are you calm your ass down, girl. Shit. I'm putting on my belt first. Stop. <laughs> Shit, that's why I had to throw ass on that table because she wouldn't yeah. settle down. <laughs> Shit, I'm just damn. I'm just Get talking, talk. goddamn. Shut your ass down. <laughs> Stop this shit. Uh, now I like that. I tell you what, I did not like about her character in the movie, um, and it's not really, it's not a problem with her, so much. Uh, she was fine. Loved her character. Uh, what I have a problem with is in the movie. I think what makes her so cool is that she's not, and we said this in the review. She's not self-serving. Even though she's, you know, going out and doing burglaries, she's doing this for another person. Mm-hmm. Yeah, she's trying to take care of this immigrant girl who's working for Falcone, and she's she's in danger because Falcone is freaking out because you know people are talking. The Batman is out there, and he ends up strangling her, killing her. This immigrant, and I thought, like, you know, in the beginning, Catwoman was talking about Selena Kyle was talking about how she was trying to help this girl, and I thought I know the movie's long, but I think they could have traded off some moody scenes. I would have loved to have seen her relationship with this girl. Mm. You know, just one scene with the set up the emotion between them. Mm-hmm. You know, a hug and you're gonna be okay. Because when she died, I didn't. You know, it was terrible that the character died. Didn't I didn't feel anything. I didn't feel anything. Yeah. yeah, she was. A, she's a prop in the movie. Yeah, yeah. But if Kat, we had a scene where she says, "I'm gonna protect you. You'll be fine. Come here, baby. I got you." Then you would have had two things that happened. You would have had one, this girl to feel bad for, and then you had this devastation from uh, Catwoman who couldn't protect her. Yeah. So I thought that, that that's that's one of the major problems I had with the movie. I thought they could have done better. I didn't think about it, but you are right. I mean, yeah. at the point where she turns up dead, it was like, well, yeah. See, that's, a, that's, that's one of my problems with the movie. That's why I didn't love it, but thought it was really brilliant and good. I just didn't have the emotion right. in there because... First of all, Bruce Wayne is being so standoffish. He, he he is not unlike so many other Batman or Batman. He's not somebody you can crawl into and go like, "Yes, I see myself as this guy." He's always somebody over there, like, "Wow, dude, I'm just checking you out." But. Yeah, exactly. 
You know, yeah, he's like, you know, got his rock star glasses on and shit. Uh -huh. But, you know, there's just not a lot of emotion for me to attach myself to in this movie. It's moody, it's, it's dark in the best way. Uh, but, you know, it's a movie that... It, I, it's a setup towards probably getting to that point, but I didn't. Besides Catwoman I, and Alfred, I didn't really find myself like emotionally attached to anybody. Even people like Jim Gordon, I like that character. I thought Jeffrey Wright was great. Jeffrey Wright is brilliant in that yeah, role, yeah, he's, but he's a great actor. But I didn't really like. Oh man, like okay, so in Dark Knight, you know, Jim Gordon has a family. Mm -hmm. The whole. The, the whole precinct is against him. Yeah. And this guy, you could, man, he's frustrated and trying his best. And you felt for this guy because you felt like this is a good man. Mm -hmm. I don't get any of that in this movie. There's not a lot of strong character in this film. Yeah, I, I'm, I'm, I'm with you on that. It's Yeah, it's like watching a film that's really well put together and going, I, I, I'm not getting that, that emotional boost that makes me go, oh, I'm really behind you. Or, oh, I care what happens. Or, I really want to see this again. Yeah. But, you know, it's... It's if I when I look at it like well it's setting things up then I can go like all right I guess it's all right that it's it's doing this and and like you I really like the film I think it's I think you know I think it's good it just doesn't have that thing that makes me love it yeah exactly and I really do man I'm right I'm right on the cusp of love but I'm just not there and you know I'm not saying that every character because I get it for Bruce Wayne he has to be detached he has to be sure, sure. putting people at arm's length. But there's just so many other characters I thought we had that opportunity to do that with that we didn't really Well, I even with. wanted more from the Riddler. Because for as much as he's talking about what he's done and everything he's set up, once mm -hmm. he's captured and we get to really talk with him, he monologues. But I was like, yeah, I'm, I'm still not quite... It, like with the with the better villains, you're like, no, nah, man, I see where you're coming from. And I was uh, one thing I did like like about the Riddler that he pointed out because what this movie does really well is point out little things that you just have to catch. And him saying him him make, drawing that line between, yeah, it's a lot easier to be an orphan when you're rich, <laughs> and you're like, yeah, Batman, oh. you sitting around <laughs> mad. What about all these other kids who don't have shit? Well, that was something that I thought was good. And I thought, you pulled this out the last minute. You know, I'm talking about how I didn't feel for anybody in the movie, but when Bruce, God damn it, when Bruce Wayne goes to talk to, uh, when he goes to talk to uh, uh, the Riddler in Arkham, and the Riddler just tells his ass off, fuck is wrong with you? <laughs> you know, you, 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 weren't, you weren't cast away as a kid. You didn't see babies die. Mm -hmm. You know, they, they actually made me feel sympathy for the Riddler. Yeah. You know, I saw but, it, but for that little bit. But up until that point, I was just like, he didn't even seem all that threatening. Wait, man, what? How, how'd y'all let this guy do so well, much? He scared I, me. He did. I, I thought I was. He, I, I really like Paul Daniels' performance. I know there's been some cr criticism of, 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 especially in that scene of him. Um, I got a problem with Paul Dano. Uh, it was um, because I know people, people have liked when, when he freaks out in the movie. People mm -hmm. said, like, oh, he's just doing a, a, a poor man's Keith Ledger. And um, I never said that. I said that it went jokery near the end. That's the thing with Riddler, though. It's like Riddler always likes to present himself as the smartest man in the room. Mm -hmm. And he initially is very calm. And he's like, yeah, this is my point. And then anytime he's proven wrong or someone gets under his skin, which is very easy to do so, he fucking flips. Yeah. And he can't control himself. And I like how even Paul Dano was like acting, where he just started, he just started like wailing. Mm. And I was like, man, we know people like that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we do. Yeah. 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 I'm just yeah. like, oh, my God, I've seen this behavior before. And yeah. so I was like, that was, yeah. uh, that was very accurate. No, that that was that, and that's true. When you say we know people like that, yeah. I, I, if I have a criticism, it's not even Paul Dano's performance. Is I wanted more interaction between Batman and the yeah. Riddler, uh, because most of the time they're just talking through Skype <laughs> or cell phones. <laughs> you know, that's pretty much it. But yeah. he did a really good job. No, and I think I, we're gonna get more of him anyway. But still. I, I got, I did like Paul Dano. Mm -hmm. I thought, I thought this was perfect cast. Uh, another problem I had with Batman because I said it was we, you know, he's messy, and yeah, and it fits. Oh, let me see here. And, and this could be argued that this fits his character now while he's still trying to get himself together. There's being messy, and then there's just complete disregard for human life out there. I was like, okay, man. How many the, people died? Yeah, from yeah like, those you, people are dead. You blew that dude up, man. Yep. And that was your fault. So I thought. Even Batman is so obsessive about protecting people at this point uh, 
that is gone beyond this whole vengeance thing and whatnot. And it's dark stuff. He's like, he's, he's here to be a savior for Gotham. So I think that with him being so obsessive, that he would be careful not to put people in danger like well, that. Well, it's, it's not only that. It's we, we go through this this car chase. It's a very dangerous car chase for everybody involved. And blowing up the tanker. Yeah. All for him to chase down the penguin and him and Gordon show up, policemen. They question him. Hey, it wasn't me. Well, all right. Uh, go on about your business. <laughs> <laughs> you going to tell him? You going to put the cuffs on him? Just leave him there. <laughs> yeah. I'm like, uh, what about all this? Uh, that's, that's arrestable. And not only that, but even the penguin, he even knows something that they don't in terms of like Spanish. You don't speak Spanish, habla español. <laughs> La rata, not yeah, hell, you yeah. idiots. No, I, was, I, I was like, all right. <laughs> He's like, shit. <laughs> and you know, when somebody in the chat said this, and I see this, it's like a lot of a lot of people were complaining about Batman killing people in the the Snyder movies. He killed a lot of people. Yeah, in but y'all ain't, saying, ain't nobody saying shit about this. Now it could be said we didn't see anybody die, but that's an explosion, y'all. I just don't think that this Batman would be this careless. And if he was sure. that careless, it should be acknowledged. Like I could see him doing this, and yeah. he's like, I, I gotta calm down. I gotta stop doing this shit. I gotta put myself together. Well, it's you know you think about how now they're training police to not get involved in these high speed chases mm. because a lot of times you get a lot of people, yeah. innocent people killed yeah. in them. Yeah. And, and this, is, this is the exact reason. And Batman man. did that. A, big, a big fiery explosion should be enough for you to look in your rear view and stop. And oh, you're like, yeah. all right, I guess I'll catch him later or let me go see who I can save. Yeah. You yeah. know, it's kind of the, even though I, I like this chase sequence and, you know, it reminded me of the chase sequence in Batman Begins, which mm-hmm. is excellent, the Tumblr. Yeah. But Batman kills so many cops in that chase sequence in that original movie. So yeah. the one thing you can say about a lot of these live action, uh, live action Batman, for the most part, at least they don't use a gun. <laughs> that's, that's the one yeah, thing. Like, I'm very that's anti-gun, true. but he, he, he does kill well, people. I t- and I tell you, man, uh, yeah. I like the chase scene. Like, I, I, still, the, I still think that that's a, a, a cool shot. I think this whole sequence is cool. I mean, yeah. besides well probably, choreographed. Besides probably killing somebody, oh, yeah. but when it comes out the fire. Mm-hmm. Hey, what's the reaction? <laughs> Bam. <laughs> I, I do like once it comes out, it's just a quick ram. Like, all right, no, no, no more bullshit. I love that. I love that. And I love when the crash happens. We don't have the clip, but the, when oh. the car's upside down and Batman slowly walking to the car. Again, another shot where they made him very threatening. But I, I don't think that that was well thought out or we needed another scene to kind Plus, of... Plus, even ramming the car, he could have killed the penguin. Yeah. He would have oh, never yeah. got his answers. No. I mean, you take that one shot when you were inside the penguin's car, and he's like... Dah, 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 dah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Around. It's like, that man's dead. Yeah. <laughs> I, just an acknowledgement of, of like, you, you know, what about this bullshit back here? What did you yeah. do? No, that's a good... That's a, that's a criticism. That's a valid criticism. Uh, I, what do y'all think about... Because we're talking about villains, man, and mm-hmm. we don't want the Joker. I've already put my villains out there. I think two villains that would actually work in this world, and some others that haven't been presented. I got one that could work in this world and one that couldn't. Uh, I think Two-Face could work because, you know... Uh, mm-hmm. uh, Again, we, you know, uh, we had, we didn't meet uh, Harvey Dent here. But they need a new D- DA. They need a, that guy they need blew a up. DA. Yep. By the way, can I just say, Peter Skarsgård, I know a tertiary character, but great performance. And sure, being just it was. Drunk, yeah, it yeah, was yeah, very yeah. good. It but was. you're right, Two Face could totally fit in this. Well, world. we've seen Two Face work. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, no, they could. It's a character that's. Yeah. Just, and I'm saying, what I the, this here's the real reason why I want to see Two Face in this movie because this movie is so dark and and, and they've already alluded to these gruesome crimes. I think they could just do a good job at making his face oh, just look yeah. completely messed up. Yeah, yeah. And realistically messed up. Yeah, yeah. Make uh, up, like makeup. Makeup wise, yeah. Yeah, I think that could work very well. Uh, and I've already said this. I think uh, a character that has never been used, except in the show Gotham in, in the cartoons, but Scarface. Mm. I really love to see Scarface be used. I just like that character a lot. You know, this guy who. This nerdy guy, this, this you know, this nebbish guy who's actually a cold blooded killer, but he, mm-hmm. <laughs> that's because he's schizo, man. Yeah, the control. Yeah, he's like the with his own little Cory bot. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> right. See? yeah, you right better is. hope I don't tell you. <laughs> <laughs> I ain't gonna say wow, that. Wow, my but, God, that is man. Don't is. let him hear you say that. Oh my lord! <laughs> when I get back there, what did he say? Man, I hear he say nothing, man. Now we're gonna have to take care what of Martin say? now. All right, he <laughs> said you a bitch. You know what we have to do. <laughs> uh, what would you like to see, though? Huh? 
Well, okay, so no votes for Tweedledee and Tweedledum, huh? Fine. I mean, <laughs> they were kind of in the movie. Well, you, what's what's that? That? Oh, oh what's the, the twins. Those, I thought that was kind of a uh, a loose adaptation of the Tweedles. Oh, was it? I think so. Oh, okay. Yeah. All right. Well, then. There you go. There you go. <laughs> I can uh, uh, see that. <laughs> uh, well, you know what? I, I want justice for Bane. Because uh, I think there's some way to do Bane in a way. How that, would you do Bane here? Well, uh... I mean, the idea that he's somebody who's been who's seen Batman and studied him, mm. and just mm. like I want to, I want to take out, I want to take this guy out, and he doesn't necessarily have to have the whole tubes set up, but but he could just have you know whatever thing he does with a syringe to pump himself up and go after him. Yeah, and, and Bane always had a crew of guys with him. That's right. So he just be a roided out dude, yeah, <laughs> crazy off drugs, yeah, like yeah. a mercenary. Yeah, mercenary and just. I mean, somebody could hire him, or he could just be on his own. Maybe, maybe Batman thwarted him. He's just always like, I, "I'm going to get my revenge on that guy, no matter what." I, That'd what be a good idea. There's a moment in the movie. Did you guys notice this? Uh, when when Batman gets shot on top of the catwalk in the stadium, mm. and he's like, <gasps> he can't breathe, and Catwoman comes to save him, and then she's getting beat up that by that Riddler thug. He injects himself of something that's very green. Did you oh, notice mm, that? People no. are saying, "Is that venom?" Or I was like, "Was that adrenaline?" Because adrenaline's not green. And that looked like venom to me. Oh. So I don't know. I don't know. Might yeah, be, but I, that, I like that idea. Maybe. Mm-hmm. Uh, who is some of your villains? In? Uh, I want Court of Owls. I mm. think that you can do that Secret Society here. I think that would make sense. I for feel. This. See, I feel like with this movie, they already did the like. Oh, but you think you know Gotham, but this is what's really been going but on. There's another layer to it. <laughs> you I want that? I want that, that additional extra, layer, that extra <laughs> thick layer <laughs> for Phil of Owls. So you want Court of Owls? Court of Owls. Explain Explain that to people who might not know Court uh, of Owls. All the all the conspiracy theorists. Yes. Yeah, I think it'd be fun. I mean, it kind of adds to also. I thought I I, I was convinced that okay, Court of Owls is gonna be in this movie. I, this, knew, I was this, too. And it's gonna be Riddler unearthing all of that. But there's no reason why they can't do in the sequel. But for those that don't know, Core Isles is a recent creation. They are a Sikh society that has been in, in, in existence for about 250 years since Gotham's founding. Mm. And they control every aspect of society in the city. Uh, a political, economic, cultural. And Batman discovers this. Um, and you know he, he, he realizes that his family was involved at one point. All these villains might have been involved. And so he has to take them down. And, but it's hard to because they're so entrenched yep. within Gotham and, and also across the world. Yeah, uh, oh, that would be a cool one right there. Yeah, I, most of all, I just really would love to see somebody they haven't used. Can I say oh, another absolutely. person? What's up, Mad Hatter? That, Matt, I don't know. I don't yeah, know. Yeah, that, that would have been my second answer, Mad Hatter. I mean, I don't know if pedophile. Do. I mean, he's a pedophile. But I don't know if they'll they'll go down that road. It's so dark, but uh, there's the character, the Mad Hatter, who is mm-hmm. a pedophile in the mm-hmm. universe. Mm-hmm. And, you know, I think. I mean, you know what? If you're gonna go this dark, I say go with it, man. Yeah. I think he yeah, would do work. this character. He, you know, he's just a guy that dresses up really crazy and yeah. He's obsessed it, with Alice in Wonderland. Mm-hmm. He has that whole that's part of his shtick. You know, he wants his Alice. And yeah, he, maybe maybe you can have it where he's kidnapping all these girls across the city, and Batman has a lot to of, stop him. A lot of people are saying Hugo Strange. Oh, that would make yeah. sense for Arkham. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, the Batman Jason Todd. Hey, Corey, after watching the Batman, I had an idea that they could introduce Jason Todd, Second Robin, as a young kid who was reluctantly with the gang in the beginning of the film. In the third film, the trilogy, they would be able to do the storyline with the Joker killing Jason Todd. Hmm. Oh, you know, a lot of people have been having ideas about Robin. I'm not. I myself am not really thinking about Robin right now. But he does. He does not need a, a young ward. No, <laughs> no, no, he does no. not. He is too unstable. Yeah. To, yeah. to be inducting child soldiers at this point. Not so yet. there's a. <laughs> There's this, this like that. Kid, Jesus, can you imagine that kid at the funeral? They're like, that could be Robin. No, uh, nah. that kid. I was like, I'm not really thinking about a Robin right nah. now. I think that'd be kind of corny. Yeah, yeah. You know, I, I, I did think that. I was like, what if they make that kid a Robin? I was like, nah, that wouldn't really work. I don't, I don't think. Plus, the think kid still that. has a mom. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Well, Batman killed the mom <laughs> in traffic <laughs> accidentally. You need to be, a, you need to be an. He might have <laughs> an explosion. Uh, kid, I heard you lost your mom. Yeah, no, put on these goddamn green tights. <laughs> <laughs> Last thing I'm going to put out here, unless anybody wants to add something, but I will say that uh, one of the things I liked, and I should have mentioned this earlier when we were talking about the Riddler, so we could have you know, kept everything in context, but I love the way they handled Henchman here. Yes, where oh, yeah. Henchman, the, the Riddler had Henchman, but instead of like, hey, boss, we work for you now. You know, no, he came in. It was like, it's, it's so relevant to what's happening today. It's, yeah. it's people who, crazy people are people who follow crazy people and conspiracy theorists online. Yeah, I mean, 
clearly he's okay with recruiting white supremacists. Oh yeah, because that's what most of these are. Yep. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, no, he found a way to to crowdsource his, his yeah. henchmen. He's a streamer in the movie because he's broadcasting yeah. all his crimes. Oh yeah, and he's attracting all these people who like QAnon people and stuff yes. like that. Yeah. That was a that was a great touch because that was something that connected to this world and was very uncomfortably identifiable yep. too. I was like, oh my god, wow. Yeah, I even love that scene when uh, they find the video underneath because they they find the whole clue underneath the carpet and then they put, put in the video and like the Riddler sits down and he's like, hey guys, so it's like a, like a typical streamer. Yeah, yeah. yeah. thanks oh, for yeah. all your advice, especially in regards to detonate. That was really helpful. Yeah, I was like, yeah. Wow, this is. Yeah. <laughs> It was very good. Yeah, mm. some people. Some people said, "I'm laughing at the chat." We are talking about Q Anon. Somebody said R Anon, <laughs> <laughs> Riddler Anon. Yeah. yeah, man. So I don't. You know, there's a lot of stuff to cover here. We talked a lot about things. It's we a tried, lot of movie. We tried to talk about things that we did not talk about in the review because they were spoilers. But if you know, send us an email and tell us about things that you saw in the movie that we might not have covered here or things you noticed and uh, maybe we'll cover that next time we're on the show. <laughs>